Did you guys notice a big spike in your sales from electric brewing when the whole kettle sour thing got big a couple of years ago? Um, well, I mean, we had we were just getting started then, so oh, I didn't know that. It's yeah, it's impossible to tell. I mean, we started in maybe like 2017 or something. So I mean, it. I guess I can't. I don't know. Like when when would you have said the kettle sour thing was biking? 2018, yeah. 2017. That's when people were going from barrel aged sours to kettle sour, which is quick yeah. sa hack sour. Right. Yeah. So correct. Yeah. So we, uh, yeah, we were just kind of getting started then. That, that was in the early days where not many people even knew that we were, you know, a thing as far as the brewing system goes. Which, so, so when you guys were around, like, cause I look at your channel and you have videos from 10 years ago, that wasn't for claw hammer. That was to, that was for your still. Well, I mean, yeah, so Clawhammer sells distillation equipment and brewing equipment. So, yeah, 10 years ago, we would have been making uh, videos about uh, b building stills, really. So what made you guys transition into uh, brew equipment seven years later? Well, we've always been into brewing, man. Like, Emmett and I have always really primarily been into brewing. Um, I just kind of, like, fell backwards into distilling uh, and, and then, you know, we decided to sell brewing equipment because Emmett had, uh, found the plans for a system that was like very similar to the one we sell online now. Um, probably four years before we started selling ours and, uh, he built a prototype like, dude, it was, it was all plastic. It was built with the plastic aquarium pump and, um, it worked, you know, it just used a bag which would sometimes scorch on the element. Um, it worked, but it was so like he brought it over to my house one day and we brewed a beer in my kitchen. He brought the whole thing over, which like that's saying something right there that, you know, how these systems are so portable. And um, we brewed a beer on it and it blew my mind, man. I was like, dude, this is so much nicer than brewing on three tier system and sparging. And I just was, I loved it. And, uh, you know, it, it it had temp control so we could just dial the temps in and it was that point where we decided all right dude this is a thing man because really there were maybe it's like one other person was selling a brew in a bag single kettle system at that point and so we just decided dude we should we should do this because this this is sweet I like and, it. I like it a lot. Yeah. You guys made a crack at yourselves one time. It was a few videos ago talking about how it has to be claw hammer for you and Emmett. Cause in any other workforce, you guys are unemployable, but I know you guys were kidding, but if you weren't doing claw hammer for a living, what would you be doing? Well, I mean, I did have a legit career job before I started this. I actually, um, before claw hammer like really took off, about a year before it really took off, uh, I moved out to Boulder to take a consulting job in the, the residential energy field. And dude, I had a sweet, it was a sweet job, man. Paid really well. I had a, literally a corner office that looked up at the Flatiron Mountains in Boulder, like downtown Boulder. And I was at that job for a year before um, Clawhammer Supply, the distillation side, just went through the roof and i had to quit yeah I just went into work one day i said hey guys they moved they moved me out there they paid for me to move out there from Asheville and everything i felt horrible uh, because that was a growing company as well but call hammer was at that point was you know i was starting to just absolutely crush it so it's a good uh, story so you're from Asheville. they flew you out to boulder you're back in Asheville. yeah back in, i'm not from Asheville originally but i was in yeah before i went out there i was in Asheville. No I'm, doubt. Because I remember when we yeah. first started texting and talking on the phone, I think you had a Boulder area code. And I was like, trying to answer this? What the hell is going yeah, on? Yeah, yep. <laughs> Still have it, yeah. 305 or something? Yeah. Yeah, 303. Yeah. 303. Um, well, yeah, I mean, do you have any regrets? I mean, I, I know there's owner hours and like we talk, some days we don't work, some days there's 12-hour days. You know, it's kind of nice to have the, the steady paycheck. But do you have any uh, – could go back in times? No, dude. My only regret is that Good answer. I wasn't more aggressive earlier. Honestly, man, I should have just uh, went full sand a long time ago and probably could have grown this company. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. 
I could I this company could probably be like five times bigger than it is right now if I had just been more aggressive. It's fine though. I mean, honestly, you know, Emmett and I we're just we're 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 kind of we're in this to have fun, man. We like brewing beer. We like watching other people brew beer. Uh, it's fun for us. It's like fulfilling. So maybe, yeah, maybe no regrets. Maybe we just stick with it how it is. What about just firing everybody and living off the YouTube channel and just pushing merch and doing like Patreon and stuff, not to deal Dude, with paying man, for 10 employees? I, mean, <laughs> I don't know how you do soon? it, man. My YouTube channel doesn't make enough. Uh, like we literally generate, we generate very little revenue off of the actual videos. And people are, are um, trying to contact us people contact us you know fairly regularly trying to get us to do ads for things and we we just say no because it's it's kind of dumb yeah but i'll tell you what man with with you guys being in town i actually for the first time ever reached out to a few people to um try and line up a sponsor i was trying to get uh so there's a don't say new air don't say now. new air don't say new air no no not new air okay there's a few companies out there now who um, are selling these, like, they're really pushing hard. I think this has been around for a while, but these anti-hangover supplements that you can take. So you drink, you they're take all, some, some, like, yeah, yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> none of them work. I was thinking, so, like, we do a beer mile, and we just go all out. We could do, like, a triple IPA beer mile or something ridiculous. That's how you get rid of a hangover. Beer, stop beer mile. Yeah. And then take these things and see if they really – do the do the trick it's not going to be the pill it's going to be sweating it out that does the trick we'll go run a mile then jump in some freezing cold water and then take the pill and be like yeah you know ship shape you know 100 percent of the time 